welcome one and all to Mass Halloween Special Video Game Nightmares. In this episode, well, it's Halloween, right? It is Halloween, it's that time of year again, that uh, kind of eerie. The 1st of October. Yeah, the eerie, you know, spooky time of year. And we thought that we're gonna do something uh, you know, special this time. We're gonna actually play one of our uh, favorite. Not really scary games, but something that touches on the Halloween theme, I would say. Yeah. And we're also going to talk a bit, before we play, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, horrors in video games, scary video games, how we experienced it. Yeah, our, our most frightening experiences with yeah. video games, particularly retro video games. We had this thing, I think, when we were kids, uh, when we thought, like, games were fun and they were colorful, but at some point we kind of stumbled across these games that were. Um, Actually, quite scary. Which game? Which system do you start with? Like this? I mean, for me, it was definitely uh, the 8-bit Nintendo yeah. and the Amiga 500. Because I've got a few. Maybe I've got a few extra years on you. So I was I was coming in late, mid to late 80s, yeah, yeah. and it was the ZX Spectrum and uh, the Vectrex. I don't know if you know about the Vectrex. I I know you do. I know about it, but uh, I you know I never played it. But I, I, for me, it's like those games are so. You know, fucked up that they become scary in a way that yeah, they weren't supposed to be. They scary, weren't supposed right? to be scary. It was just but supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. It was for yeah, children, yeah. and indeed, my grandmother bought me one, and she kept it in her house, mm. a Vectrex in the dining room to like lure you to come through. Yeah, basically, yeah, that was the whole plan behind it. And right. I used to go around there, and I remember the first time I played it. There's a built-in game which is uh, Mindstorm, mm. I think, from which is like Asteroids. What's that game about? It's basically the same as Asteroids, so you start off and you're a little spaceship in the middle of the screen, you can rotate, yeah. you can thrust. Yeah, I saw a video. You can, you can shoot like uh, these kind of mines, they're not meteors, they're yeah. mines in this game, kind of kind of three spiked shapes which you have to shoot. But why is that scary, or why was that scary for you? It's hard to put my finger on it, but I think it's the music. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning, it's, it's got this this kind of like soundtrack that, that, that happens, it's yeah. kind of like just a few notes, but it's just the most, the darkest music you've yeah, ever yeah. heard. And like shut away in that dining room, my nan's house with all the old ornaments and stuff, and the curtains. So it was more like the, the kind of atmosphere at the time of uh, your life that did it more than the game actually try to be scary. Yeah, and possibly in my memory, it's scarier than it actually was. Yeah, that was one of my first you know, terrifying about gaming experiences. Being at grandparents' house was always like uh, yeah, that was kind of like going to the spook house. The Vectrex is the last thing you needed in that yeah, situation. Yeah. Like whenever you turned on, you said this like whirring sound in the background, the mm. sound of the diodes like crackling, crackling away, and everything's black and white. And yeah. I don't know, it was just it was just a very scary gaming experience for me. In my case, at that age, you know. Yeah, yeah. for me, I think the first uh, game that I found, I wouldn't say it was like scary, but I thought Metroid for the Nintendo 8-bit was uh, that was actually the first game that I think succeeded on, you know being kind of scary and you felt very, when you were like Samus, you, you were very alone and yeah. uh, you were like the only human yeah. being there and it was very, it was kind of like, a, they tried to copy Aiden, I guess, but yeah. um, I actually found that to be a bit scary. And, it was sinister, it was a real sinister game. Yeah, right? yeah I, had, I had a few nightmares. The enemies, the bosses and everything, they were quite dark as well, mm. pretty twisted, like freakish looking things. Yeah. The concept of the Metroid itself as well, it's kind of flying jellyfish with like these fangs coming out of the yeah, bottom yeah. as well, it was pretty dark. But, but I, the music made it. Yeah, that was the dark, music was right. really, really dark, and it was yeah. overall a very good game. And I think that was one of the first games that actually succeeded on. I mean, you had the Atari age, and we saw videos of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was dark as well. Maybe for the same that, reason the Vectrex was. Yeah. Just, you know, the, the hardware wasn't very good. The but sound it, chip's not very good. It's so. almost kind of like comical. Like uh, yeah. in that case, like Halloween and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I know the nerd has touched on this, but anyways, we yeah. can't leave it out. Uh, was not scary, but it was messed up. Like, yeah, like the screaming sound. Yeah, yeah. It's just like this like high pitched beep. It just really grated your nerves. Like, mm. It was horrible to listen to. Like. And just this fucking guy running. Like the, the concept of the yeah. game is so messed up. You're a guy with a chainsaw, and you're supposed to chainsaw murder women. That's the teenagers. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing. Like in the Halloween game, you were like uh, yeah. chased. You were chased by Michael Myers, and he was like fucking running around with a knife. Not scary, kind of funny, but in a way, it's fucked up. Just the way the, the way the game is made as well—that low tech, yeah. bad sound chip, bad graphics, and everything's just a little bit jerky, and it's just a little bit unsettling, you know. Yeah. yeah. A lot of all games. Another game which is actually that reminds me of is Jet Set Willy. Never played on the, it. On the, on the ZX Spectrum, I had a ZX Spectrum, and I had Jet Set Willy, and I didn't know anything else. I didn't know anything about it before I bought it, and I bought it, and um, it was just a weird game again. It was just surreal and. 
I don't know how this guy, how he thought of it, Matt Smith, the guy who made it. Just one guy made the whole thing. He actually showed me a video uh, before we record this, and even I can say it was pretty messed up. Like sprites, right? Yeah, the sprites and, and mm. the sound effects, and just the overall idea of the game seemed really messed up. Like he yeah. was on fucking crack or something. Like, it seems, yeah, I think I think he possibly was on drugs. And the, the looping music, uh, I can't remember what, what song it was now, mm. a famous classical piece, classical music, just loops on a you know on a really low low bit low res loop all the way through the game it just the whole gaming experience just makes you go a bit you know did you know that crazy. by the way that i saw a documentary about atari and like everybody who worked for atari was fucking like drug users yeah i'm not uh, surprised I mean, they were all hippies weren't they yeah they were all hippies and, and everybody was like high when they programmed so the atari has to kind of uh, atari is a bit weird in that sense because games yeah. are fucking weird they like, sometimes have some weird elements right or yeah. just just it, everything's just a little bit kind of a bit strange yeah yeah I know, yeah, the ZX Spectrum certainly had some, some games like that, you know. But I think the console that kind of defined uh, what's, what we look at, not today, but in the 80s and 90s, was maybe the Nintendo, mm -hmm. with games like mm -hmm. um, Ghosts and Goblins. Well, not scary, but... Yeah, they, on the arcade as well. You know. Yeah, the arcade came, came but I mean, most people probably remember the, the NES version. And they were not scary, but they used, they used like gothic elements. They definitely yeah. used Halloween-themed. Ideas. And it was dark and, and it was, you know, lo loads of monsters and stuff. Like. That game is scary because it's hard as fucking Yeah, man, it's terrifyingly hard. Like. Yeah, that's why I think that, that game is that scary. That game scares you. Look at the arcade machine, you're like, yeah. oh, I don't want to play that because you know it's just going to eat all your credits and you're not going to get anywhere on it. And but ridiculously hard game. Yeah, but it has this, like, it has a comical effect too. But, but Castlevania, I think, definitely was the first game that nailed it. Yeah. Like, you know, that kind of mixed all the elements, all the... Yeah. Like, when I think about Halloween, and I think about video games, the first fucking thing that pops into my head is Castlevania. Well, you know, what do you associate with Halloween, right? You got what? Like, with, like vampires, witches, vampires, and witches, witches uh, zombies, werewolves. Yeah, yeah, What else do they have? They have, like, Frankenstein They also monsters. have, like, the, the classic universal monsters, like Dracula, yeah. Frankenstein, and Mummy. So they borrowed... Castlevania borrowed, like, everything that we like about Halloween and just packaged it in one game. Yeah. And I think that's why I love Castlevania so much. Um, and there's, this is not a surprise. We're actually going to play our favorite. I think it's hard to define what's our favorite Castlevania game. You can probably talk about this yep. first. And I talk about the prequel to this game. Let's get this in the candlelight here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's Castlevania Symphony of the Night. A dark game, a gothic game. A very dark, uh, it's very dark. But also a great game. Maybe my favorite game ever made. Oh. Yeah, possibly mine too. The problem is I've played it I think I've completed it all the way through to about, you know, several hundred, you know, like over a hundred percent every year since since I you know, since I could emulate yeah, it basically. Yeah. I finished it three times actually. And now I've got the PlayStation One at home with the Japanese version of it. Yeah. I still play it, you know, regularly. Yes, and it's a great game and it has awesome. a lot of depth in it. But um yeah. We actually, I experienced this Castlevania game first, and then I started reading about it. Well, this I, is too big, right, to, to actually play in an episode. Yeah, no, we, we, want, we wanted to do this, but it's it's like a 20-hour game, I would say. Maybe. Maybe this will be next Halloween. Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows? So we landed on the prequel to Rondo of Blood, which I think is the best classic Castlevania game, and it's, uh, no, not Rondo of Blood, we ran to... The prequel to Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night, sorry. My yeah. mistake. Uh, so uh, we decided on, uh, yeah, Rondo of Blood. I'm not gonna don't set fire to it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very valuable. Game. Yeah, it's like uh, I don't know. Don't even get it close to the candles. Hundred hundred dollars. If I um, put it down, I'll, I'm gonna put it down. But this is the game, and this is the prequel to uh, Symphony of the Night. Uh, and it's debatable which one is better, uh, Super Castlevania or mm -hmm. this one. But both of them are fucking great. And I, but I think this one is actually because of the different routes you can take, and it has yeah. more depth to it. I think this and is it's harder better. as well. It's the challenge is there, and that's what you need. Super Castlevania is probably the easiest Castlevania yeah. game. I think. That's uh, no joke, right? It's really hard. It's difficult. We haven't beaten it yet, and we played it for three sessions, but we're almost there. Uh, but fortunately, like you can see here, this is the game case. It's more than just that. It's the original Japanese version of Rondo of Blood. Not only that, there's also a fully working mint condition PC engine just over there. It's a good thing, man. Um, um, that was the, a good the, point. the best version of the PC engine you can possibly get. Yeah. Which, thanks to Magnus, who um, is a bit of a collector, a uh, tracked it down. Yeah. And um, he's, he's actually bought two. Uh, as you probably saw in a previous mass episode, yeah, one special broke. edition video which yeah. Magnus did, one broke. Um, this one's this one's a beauty. It's been working uh, for four months now, mm -hmm. three three four months. Um, but anyways, we're gonna do this uh, Rondo Blood, uh, but we're gonna move on a bit and talk about. Uh, we we kind of covered the early times now, but what when can you say that like eighties, definitely Castlevania and, and uh, you know the games we were talking about they were scary. Yeah. But I think in the nineties it became more like. Um, 
Well, it's kind of like like horror movies in a game, or or like more like yeah. um, action horror, yeah. rather than just being sinister because it was weird. Like mm. kind of like some of the Spectrum stuff and the Spectrex stuff is kind of like like a David Lynch movie. It's yeah, sinister. Yeah. It's weird, but it wasn't supposed to be. It's just you know the systems were just so bad that it was like drawing a picture of Mickey Mouse with your yeah, eyes closed. You know, his, his eyes are in his mouth, and like he's got a huge deformed right hand. It was that is that kind it's of just, just weird. It's just stuff, weird, you know? but 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 scary. But um, when they actually, like, I would say the modern horror genre, mm -hmm. uh, Resident Evil, in 1996, probably, and I, okay, we can say, like, Doom was a bit scary. I yeah. never found it scary, but for some people that was kind of like a horror theme game. And these also, are all dark adult games, that right? Yeah, yeah. And, that, and there was a time when these first started to come out, so, um, the modern era right, of, yeah, of, of dark yeah. horror video games. And we had, like, I would say Splatterhouse was pretty... Yeah, we have this one here, too. Yeah. Uh, Splatterhouse with the arcade, and uh, it was released for the Mega Drive and uh -huh. the PC Engine. It's a pretty dark game. It's not scary or still goofy, but it's pretty dark. You should see it on the, on the ZX Spectrum. Now, that's scary. You have, you have it on the Spectrum? Uh, it, it, it was brought out on the Spectrum, and I had it on the Spectrum. Like, I don't have it now, yeah. but, you know, it, it, you can emulate it, but, yeah, it was... We can show some, uh, probably some clips of that. I've never seen it, so it would be fun to see. It was rubbish, but... But then we can maybe say that uh, Mortal Kombat was actually a game that yeah. it, it took gore to yeah. a whole new level. Yeah. To its monsters, to yeah. like dark elements and terror as well. It was, I never found it scary, but I, yeah. Mm. Scared, like you can be scared of different things. Uh, if you want like the airy, uh, scary feeling, you probably should play Cosmic, but with Mortal Kombat it was more like shocking because they, it was so gruesome. Well, man, how about Resident Evil or Silent Hill, for example? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, Resident Evil 2, was it, with the bunny costumes? Yeah, no, that was 3. Uh, was it 3, right? Silent the amusement arcade at the beginning. You're in a closed-down amusement arcade, it's bad enough as it is. Yeah. Like, all, like, these fairground rides scary, and, yeah. like, carousels, like, little cobwebs on it and stuff. But then you've got, like, these huge pink bunnies, like, like chasing after you. I mean, I played... Um, that was the, scary. the first time I actually got freaked out from a video game was probably Resident Evil with the dogs yeah. uh, jumping out from the window. And Resident classic Evil, moment. yeah, that was classic video game history. And Resident Evil, I think, defined the formula. But when I played Silent Hill 2 the first time, that's the game that I actually couldn't even play. Like, I, I uh -huh. played it with friends and we were kind of like scared, but I could not play the game alone. It was that fucked yeah. up. Oh, you mean? It's uh, uncomfortable to just like to play it alone. This is not even fun. But that, that game kind of took, like, I, you have never played it, I think, but you know about it. Yeah. Uh, like, there's one character uh, called the Pyramid Head that actually rapes other characters in the game. Like there's this very famous scene in the game uh, when, uh, I think his name is Jack. Uh -huh. is Jack. Um, he walks into a room and he's with watching the main enemy, the pyramid head, rape one of the other enemies. And like, I think he like tore her apart. And that kind of, yeah, that was like, for me in 2002 or something when I played it, it was like, that took meant like psych psychological yeah. Um, yeah. Horror, horror to, yeah. and that's what Silent Hill did, like Resident yeah. Evil, Focus on the classic horror. Mm -hmm. Silent Hill was fucking messed up. Yeah, it uh, was actually. Yes, yeah, so it was. It, you see, you couldn't do it on the Vectrex. You know? No, no. <laughs> it wasn't the process. If you want to see, if you want to see <laughs> me, see a pyramid head uh, rape somebody on the Vectrex or the Atari, it would, it would look no, pretty no, weird. No. That would be comical. But the Vectrex uh, rapes you. It does. Like because there it, it was a hard, that was all the games were hard on that as well. You know, they were all super difficult, and mm. that system was possessed by the devil. As I think far so, as I was yeah, concerned. Yeah. So play some uh, music from it, man. It's it's scary. Uh, yeah. But like in. I kind of like, I wouldn't say that I lost interest in scary video games, but it seems that um, games today like Dead Space or the newer uh -huh. uh, yeah. Biohazard or Resident Evil games. The new Batman game, maybe. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're pretty scary, yeah. but I mean, I'm so used to it now that it yeah. doesn't surprise me or scare me. Yeah. But one game that we actually started playing like two years ago was uh, Minecraft. Uh -huh. And that kind of scared me sometimes. Yeah, me too, big time. You're in a dark cave and like yeah, you're yeah. mining away and like, you're out of torches or something and then suddenly like a spider just jumps in your yeah. face or a creeper starts hissing. Yeah, you hear that you kind of creeper that. sound. So I would say that the latest game that I actually was kind of like, not scared, but, but felt was a bit eerie yeah. was, was definitely Minecraft. And I was yeah, not even supposed to get back to the, yeah. the classic days where things made yeah. it was not supposed to be scary, but they became scary because yeah. of limitations or... Yeah, or just the, the, you know, the way the game was made, that kind of blocky style as well, I yeah, think yeah. that actually helped, that helped make it even more, you know, scary, like it was pretty, pretty freaky. And that's the great thing about independent games, I think. Yeah, they, they can be a little bit darker, a little bit more, yeah. um, kind of uh, sinister and, and haunting sometimes mm -hmm. as well. The music in Minecraft was pretty haunting at times, yeah, right? Yeah, and it went from being like very peaceful to... 
yeah, to getting very dark. And yeah, sort of moments of, of, of like terror, you know, when the creep or like when a zombie suddenly comes in your face, you know, just mm -hmm. not literally, but you know. <laughs> Good one. Anyway, on that uh, note. On that note, yeah, that was probably the, the highlight. So uh, from now we're gonna play um, Rondo of Blood. Yeah. Uh, our, probably our favorite uh, scary game. I love this game. I love, it, I love it so much. And it's like we have. Perfect Halloween. Perfect Halloween has all the elements. Yeah. Everything. And we're gonna keep talking a bit, I guess, about. Like this is the intro, but we're gonna play the game, focus a bit on Castlevania, I guess, but we might touch on, on other things. But uh, enjoy, guys. I mean, we enjoy playing this now, and I hope you enjoy watching. Well, I need to drink for this game first. I think this is a hard. Happy Halloween, man. Happy Halloween. Halloween. Cheers. You didn't go out this year. No way, no. Are you gonna? No, I was gonna, but I, I uh -huh. think I will. We will see, but um, uh -huh. anyways, enjoy guys. It's enough celebration for me. Mm. Run of blood. Take it away.